Hello again. I've had a few questions about how to structure winter training and um, so if you're in the northern hemisphere then you're coming into the sort of autumn and winter period and you might start to think about what goals you're going to have for the summer. So traditionally you do a long period of endurance training over the winter and then start to introduce some intensity as you get close to your events. Well if you're doing shorter events, high intensity type events, then that makes a lot of sense because uh, you're incre becoming increasingly specific as you approach your event. But if you're doing longer events like um, ultra endurance events or bikepacking events or stage races or even longer sportifs, you're training to ride faster for a long period of time. So the traditional periodization might not work for you. It might do, it might not. You can ask yourself a couple of questions that might be helpful. Is one, do you want to do long rides over the winter? And also, is uh, is your event in the spring? You know, is it early in the year? And if it, if the answer to both those questions is no, then it may not make sense to do you know lots of long rides in the winter period. It might make more sense to work on you know your higher intensity powers, your FTP, and things like that, and then build in the endurance later in the year. And that's sort of what people might call reverse polarization, where you work on the higher intensity first, and then build the endurance as you get close to your event. And that can work quite well if you're an experienced athlete. You know, if you've got the a reasonably good endurance base already, then you can easily handle the volume of high intensity work with, uh, with some uh, lower intensity riding. And then quickly build your endurance specifically for the events as you get close to the events. Um, so that can be a nice way to train. That leads into two more questions. Do you have the endurance base to do your event? Can you actually ride for long enough to uh, do your event? Can you ride the distance that you would need to do if it's a shorter event? Or if you're doing an ultra endurance multi-day event, like a bikepacking event, can you ride for the duration necessary for your daily routine? Can you sensibly keep moving at a reasonable pace for the durations that you would need to during your planned event? And also, what are your biggest weaknesses? Is, is your biggest weakness the endurance side? Do you struggle with keeping going for long periods of time? Or is your biggest weakness the speed? Well, if it's the endurance side, it might be that you're just actually trying to ride too fast and you're getting tired early. Um, and if you went a little bit slower, you might improve your endurance. But let's not worry too much about the nuances of it. If you feel that your weakness is the endurance side, then uh, that might be something that you need to work on quite early. Typically in periodization, you work on the least specific thing first. So that if you're doing an endurance event, an ultra endurance event, then the least specific thing might be the speed and the most specific thing might be endurance at your race pace, which would be your training, you know, round about your aerobic threshold, your training zones. Two, you might go into three or four, you know, you might go above your FTP occasionally on steep hills. But in general, well, you'd be riding at quite a low intensity. So this could lead nicely into this reverse polarization model where you work, perhaps work on your FTP early on and then work on your endurance. And actually quite often I quite like to add in um, a short block where you again work on trying to improve your FTP because off the back of that endurance phase, you can often get a squeeze a little bit more out and the higher intensity powers are other things that are quite quick or much quicker to uh, develop so you can sort of improve performance a little bit by doing some higher intensity very close to your event. And then moving on from that, bear in mind that it takes longer to build this aerobic fitness. Moving your aerobic threshold takes years. If you look at a study that I quite like by uh, Andrew, Andrew Jones at, uh, about Paula Radcliffe, you can see that as she progresses year on year, and I've shared it in other videos, as she progresses year on year, her aerobic threshold moves and at some point her FTP, her anaerobic her lactate threshold, uh, a critical pace basically stops improving but her aerobic threshold continues to move and her VO2, VO2 max maxes out, you know, quite quickly. So bearing in mind that throughout the training period it's good to have as much volume as possible, we you know, within reason. So um, do as much volume as you can, but within the uh, constraints of still being able to do your higher intensity training. And also, if you're working on your endurance, it's good to include some interval training, some sort of speed work or some tempo work. It doesn't have to be structured. It can be that you go out for an endurance ride and you do ride the hills a little bit harder. 
but having some speed mixed in with your endurance phase maintains that um, you know that higher end fitness and also makes it easier to build straight back into doing interval training when you want to specifically work on your on your perhaps on your FTP or your anaerobic capacity or, or whatever it might be. And it takes time. It takes a long time for things to change. When you start out, things change quite quickly. And some of that's because you actually just get better at riding your bike or you get better at, at running. So you're actually becoming more efficient. So you're not getting actually getting any fitter necessarily. You just get better because you're getting more skilled. And then to make physiological changes, you're talking about well at least four weeks really to make a significant change. Um, so you need to you know give yourself a couple of months of each block of training and keep testing, see whether you're improving what you want to improve, and then do another couple of months. And if you if you stop improving in the area that you want to improve, then you might have reached the limit of adaptation for that type of training. So you need to change the stimulus a bit and then do another eight weeks of something slightly different and then you might go back and see whether you can improve what you what you tried to improve first. And what you're doing is planning out the things that you need to change over the period of time from now to when you uh, when your goals occur and working on this sort of least specific thing first. What I'm saying here is that you need to give yourself time for your body to adapt. You can't force yourself to get fit. You just have to provide a stimulus and let your body adapt to that stimulus. You can't rush it. You can't, if you try and force yourself to get fit faster, you'll probably just get overtired and might even become overtrained. And um, and then you'd have to have months off. So just um, be conservative and take your time. Year on year, you'll get fitter and fitter make uh, ambitious but achievable goals each year and if you keep training you'll keep getting better. The other factor that's very useful to include in any training plan if not essential is doing tests, doing regular tests and having some way of measure whether you're improving what you want to improve. So you, you mean you, obviously you can do an FTP test, you can do a ramp test on Zwift or trainer road or Ruby or whatever and that'll give you an indication of your FTP. Different tests give different estimates of FTP. You might do two different FTP tests and get different results for your FTP but don't worry too much about that. Just um, keep using the same test to test the same thing. If you want to improve your one minute power or your 30 second power or your peak power then test at one minute 30 seconds or, or your some maximal sprint powers and record that and see whether it's improving. If you want to improve your VO2 max, you can see what your performance is over a five minute time trial. But in addition to the traditional tests, if you're doing an endurance event, having an idea of your fatigue resistance is quite useful. So doing a longer test whereby you might do something like an eight minute or 10 minute or 20 minute time trial at the start, do a long ride, maybe 2,000 kilojoules, like which might be around 200 kilometers, depending on what your power is that you're riding at, at a sort of endurance pace, and then do the same test again, and see what the degradation is. And if you pick two, te if you pick a test duration, maybe up a hill that's near you, near where you fin start and finish your ride. Say if you did an eight-minute effort. You know, most people, most endurance athletes can do two eight minute efforts fairly close together and get a very similar result. So you might have, you might do your eight minute test for 15 minutes riding around to recover at your endurance pace and then do another eight minute test. And if you get the same result, you know, you can do these two tests quite close together uh, without any degradation. So then when you do one test and then a long ride or run, and then do the test again, you know that the degradation, you know, the change in what you did in the first test when you were fresh and what you did in the second test when you were tired is due to this fatigue that's come as part of your long endurance ride or run. And there, in that way, you can test your fatigue resistance and see whether you're improving it. And you can use this type of test to look at different nutritional strategies or pacing strategies. If you do it on one week and just eat normally, what you might normally do, and then try it another week later you obviously your fitness won't have changed very much and eat a lot of carbs try and eat you know like theoretically you can eat 90 grams of carbohydrates per hour if your stomach will tolerate it if you can then you can see whether that actually improves your performance and in that way you can experiment with the logistics of your ride your nutrition your hydration pacing and that sort of thing to 
improve your performance without necessarily improving your fitness. Don't just think about getting fit. Don't just use a traditional periodization model. Think about what you need, what specific fitness gains you need to make, what logistical things you need to test and uh, make it personal to you. And if, of course, if you need any help, get in touch. We've got the group plan, which includes a lot of one-to-one -one interaction with myself or Claire, depending on what your needs are. Or we'd love to coach you if you want to go on a coach plan. Anyway, uh, sales pitch over and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.